Good evening. Happy Thursday. Welcome to Creations by Julie. I am Julie. Ed is behind the camera tonight to catch any of your questions that you might have throughout the live. Uh, be sure when you hop on, let us know you're here, uh, where you're from, and especially if you're new, so everybody can give you a good welcome. Let me... I haven't heard of Ed's phone yet, so we'll see if I can beat him getting on and see if we're actually on. Yep. I'm on Instagram, <laughs> All right, let me turn this down. <laughs> oh, I'm not on Instagram, Ed. Yes, I am, but I'm not right this minute. Okay. Don't just fix it. Tell me what you do. Well, I had to click the X to get you out of Instagram. Then I'm clicking the menu at the bottom, which it gives a real quick. Remember yours does that weird thing? Hold it. See this? Yeah. It'll pop up if you hold that. Then click the Creations by Julie and it puts you into my page. But then you'll have to click on that again and see my page or else you're going to have to scroll through and find it. So it it should be showing up on there now. Okay. Sorry, y'all. We just had to take care of a little technical difficulty. It should but be showing up on there now. <laughs> That's how I know he's on, because I always hear it. Um, and you, I don't know if, you know, we're in our 70s, and I turn my phone down, and then, y'all, I forget to turn it back up. And, you know, I might pick it up tomorrow and see that I've missed several calls. So Yeah, and I'll go into the store and try to email and find out where she's at. You don't it's email me. Well, message, whatever. <laughs> And my phone's turned down, and I don't hear it. So we have problems trying to remember to get the phone turned back up. But you got to turn it down. Actually, you have to turn it down twice because you turn the phone down, and then you got to turn it down once you're on Facebook. But Sandra Ren Show and Kathy Keller and uh, say hi. Hey, <laughs> hi, ladies. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, I hope you've had a good week. Hopefully you've been cooler than we have. We actually got a little bit of rain last night, but not enough to help things. But um, it, it's fine. It's a little bit cooler today. I think it still feels like 109 out there, but um, and that's weird if you can say that's a little bit cooler. But anyway, welcome. We're going to have a little bit of fun tonight with a very unusual wreath. But before we do that, uh, I will tell you the mystery word for this week is I have to look make sure hashtag apron that's because what I'm going to give away is this Magnolia Craft Club for the month of August and it is actually a large white apron I have seen several people creators this week uh, do their apron with a stencil and they've added uh, cute ribbon and stuff at the bottom to make it more colorful couple of people added pockets. I'm not a seamstress and I have a bug that's bugging me. A little gnat it looks like. But anyway, you'll get the, the apron and it's a large apron. You'll get a squeegee and a pack of black paste. I'm going to put the apron back in this bag. But you will get a step-by-step -step instruction sheet. And that's not black paste, by the way. It's ink because this is fabric. And then this is the stencil you get, which is really cute. It says, uh, Baker's Gonna Bake, and it's got the mixer on it. You can, Of course, you're going to get the black ink, so you, you, if you don't have any other ink, you would do the whole thing in black. That is an exclusive stencil, uh, unless they have a lot of them left over. They say they're not, normally they don't plan to sell the stencils that come out in the craft kit. But this is Magnolia Designs, and um, I decided to give away the whole kit. Therefore, it will be this week, the two videos, and next week, the two videos. So your mystery word for next week will be the same thing. Uh, then, not this coming Monday, but the following Monday, which I think is the 22nd. Am I right? I think it's the 22nd. Is it raining? Sorry. We don't see rain falling from the sky. Yeah. But I believe I see rain falling. <laughs> yep. Yay. 
So um, I believe it's the 22nd. We will draw names. I will put everybody that in the comments that put hashtag apron. Your name will be put in our blessing bag, and we will draw on the 22nd, and I will be shipping this kit to someone. Uh, you don't have to do anything other than put hashtag apron to be eligible for it. So if you're watching this on replay, you're still eligible. Just put in and put in it as many times as you want to. Go back and watch the other replays from Monday and um, put it in. So your name can be in the bag four or five, ten times. That's up to you. Okay, so that, that gets the craft club kit. Tonight, I don't know if you saw the picture. Uh, we're going to make a wreath out of brown lunch bags. So, of course, you need a package. of. I think they're all the same size. Doesn't matter where you get them. I actually discovered that my grocery store had them cheaper than Dollar uh, Tree. I think the ones at Dollar Tree, you got 40 and they were $1.25. And these, I got 50 for like $1.28. Somebody says they've had packages of 100 at Walmart and they're just pennies, you know. So, but you're going, it depends on the size of wreath you want to do, but the lunch bags are all kind of the same size. So you're going to need some lunch bags. You're going to need the frames. Okay, these are from the Dollar Tree. They come just like this in a set of two. They're actually eight inch frames. Um, and I'm going to show you how Ed cut one of them for me. Now, you can also do this on the Dollar Tree 14-inch frames, um, but you would just fold your bag a little bit different, and I'll go over that with you. But now, remember, these are paper, these, so this is not meant for outside. Um, so my first thought when I saw somebody do it, and I saw two or three people to do it, I saw um, the silver farmhouse, I think, did it, um, turquoise valentine did it, Leah. So, if you want to do a large one, my thought was I wanted to do a small one because a lot of people take a small wreath and put it on their kitchen cupboards, hanging on their cupboards. You might put it on a pantry door and maybe sunflowers or bees or whatever your kitchen is decorated. Kitchen is the first thing I thought of, but this would look cute on a mirror. Uh, and I'll give you some ideas once we get in it. but. Your first thought might be, how in the world, where are you going to put a paper wreath? But there are quite a few places that you can put it. I just felt like the smaller one I wanted to start with. And I actually did two. And I'm going to show you the technique for both of them. They're just a little bit different. But it, I discovered it does make a difference. So I'm going to get you started and tell you, you know, exactly how to do it. But I'm going to show you the two that I've done. Okay, I've got this one, and then I've got this one. The difference in the two, they're both on the same ring, but the difference in them is the way we did, that I did the trash bags. This one is, sandwich you can, bags. sandwich bags, yeah, they're not trash bags. Um, this one is larger, it's still the same size bag, and some of these are like, you're going to make a donut, basically. Some of these donuts are larger than the others, so I really had to, you know, kind of squish it down. But it is thicker, um, so it just depends. I would say try the three different size. You could do this on a 12-inch, a 14-inch. I wouldn't go any larger than the 14-inch. Uh, but anyway, the difference in one and two, I liked the two. I just thought it looked better. It takes less bags. And for what I wanted to do, my first thought was like uh, to decorate it with the um, fragrant orange slices. I like to hang it in the kitchen. So I wanted to keep it very rustic and do like orange slices and pine cones and pomegranates or something. You can't put a whole lot because it's not a huge wreath um, unless you wanted to put oranges all the way around it and cover the whole wreath. Once you get this done, you can decorate it any way you want to. And let me also mention both videos that I watched of people doing this. Once they got to this point, they took a chip brush and they just, you know, kind of a dry brush all over the paper. Uh, one lady did it in white 
and one did it in black. Not painting the whole bag, but just kind of bits and pieces. Highlight. Hi yeah, just a highlight. I decided I didn't want to do either, uh, that I w because what I wanted to do, I wanted to leave it this color, but you can paint it. Okay. Any questions so far? Ed's going to have to zoom in just a little bit when I talk about the ring because, and he had to do this for me. I, I couldn't do it. I wasn't strong enough. And he took the big pliers. I think he called them sevens. And you want, whether you're... Seven, seven inch line. Yeah. Whether you're going to do this size, which is eight inch, and see there's only one, two, three, there's only three sections on this. I know your 14 inches have, I think, six sections. I'm not sure about the 12 inch. Um, but whatever ring that you use, you're going to... Separate. Okay, hold on a minute. <laughs> He's telling me what to do. Well, you do me all the time. I, I don't know. I don't know if y'all have been watching us since the beginning, but to start, when he first started behind the camera, he would whisper because he didn't want anybody to hear him. Now look at him. He's telling me what to do. He's directing. Maybe I should call him Director Ed. Okay, so you're going to cut all three. You have three uh, rows or wires. The 14 inch might have four. I'm pretty sure it does because there's two in the middle and one on each end. So you're going to cut as close to one of these crossbars as you can get. And, and see that, that way. That's the only way you're going to pull it apart to put the bags on it. Okay, does that make sense? Can y'all see how that is, how he's just cut that? Now, you're going to notice that the bottom one is a good bit shorter than the other two, but don't worry about that. If you need to, you're going to be slipping your bags on. You can twist it. You're going to be putting your bags on right here. Um, if you need to put some tape around these three especially if you want your kids to help you. This is something kids can help do, easy. Um, then put a little bit of tape around the three of them just to make it a little bit easier. And then I'm going to show you, I needed him to hook it back together for me. The two videos I watched, they actually just use glue. And I wanted something a little sturdier than that. So what we did, he started with this top one, and he kind of pulled it about uh, three-fourths of an inch or something like you kind of overlap and then he took his pliers and bended this one down to where it went on like a hook and then he tightened it we didn't worry about the third one he took the second one and did the same thing and I think he went down at the bottom for it then I took a zip tie and tied this ring to this one and I ended up putting a zip tie on the top also if you want to just glue it, go for it. Um, the two people that I saw do this, that's what they did. But anyway, whatever wiring to be able to twist it and cut it and stuff. I think you use the needle nose to bend it and get it to hook. Yeah, um, seven inch lineman to cut it. I actually thought about, and I meant to get one of the embroidery hoops. Do they separate totally? I'm not sure because you don't need, you just need something in a circle to put these bags donuts on. If an embroidery hoop will undo and totally separate, you could use an embroidery hoop. You just need a circle. Uh, one person I saw, she did the bags a little bit different. I think it was the turquoise valentine. She used a coat hanger and made her circle. So. You just need something to come back and make a circle. All right, so that's what he did. He cut all three. Okay, I don't see any questions, so I'm going to show you. Um, like I said, you do that on any wire frame, whatever size. So you're going to take your bags, and no matter whether you're doing... Huh? I'm going to zoom back. Okay. No matter whether you're... Don't zoom too far because I'm going to show them how to cut the bags. Uh, no matter if you're using a 14 inch or 12 inch or this 8 inch, you're going to do your bags close to the same. But I'll explain that. Alright, so you're going to take your lunch bag and see how you've got the little flap 
here that makes the bottom of your bag. You're going to kind of just fold it up and you're going to cut right there, which gives you a cylinder. Now, don't throw these pieces away. Save them because I'm going to show you how to make a pumpkin out of this too in a week or so. All right, so once you've cut off the bottom of your bag, you have a cylinder. Now, this is what you would use if you're using a 14-inch wreath frame. You would use the one bag, the whole, and you just take it and you wad it up. And what I did is I did about 10 or 15 at one time. All right, and you're going to use that whole bag. And usually, like, if you'll just do that, set them aside and do about 10 or so and then go back, it just kind of helps them look a little crinkled. All right, then you're going to take it. This is for the, the big wreath only, not the little wreath. You're going to take it and put your hands in it, and then you're just going to squish it together. Basically, what you're doing is making a donut. And you see where we're going with this. This is what is going to go in the, to put the paper all the way around. And see, it makes a pretty good size hole. And it can be as tight or whatever, but you've made a donut. So you would use this size donut for a 14 inch. There's two methods to do for the small one. You still cut the bottom off. Okay, the method I saw Miss um, Yvonne doing was you've got your, your bag like this. I think she was cutting it down the seam, but I discovered it was just faster for me to go and cut. You want two pieces. And this is the way I liked the way it turned out better. This makes the smaller of the two. So you cut two pieces and to get the same thing, you've already got your seam right there. So you're just going to basically cut down both sides of your seam to come up with two pieces. All right, then you have to put them into a cylinder. You have to make a cylinder. So this is another step. You're going to fold it. I like folding it not not the longest way, but in half this way. So you're actually one of them you're folding it back up to where, you know, the little cutout is at one side of your bag. You're just folding it back. This takes just a little bit longer, but I and I just ran glue right along the top. Doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be exactly at the top. And then you're just you're making a smaller cylinder, basically, is what you're doing. So you'll fold it and just run a bead of glue to make your cylinder. So each bag you get two donuts. And by doing it this way, it kind of made the donut smaller. Um, now I'll show you, we're going to scrunch them up in a minute, but I'll show you the other way that made the larger one. You still are cutting the bottom of the bag off. And I did this one first because I thought, well, that'll make it just quicker and simpler. Whoops. I wanted two cylinders. So I thought, what if I just cut the bag in half? You've got two cylinders. So then I just went, you could fold it if you want to get picky about it. I don't think I did on any of mine, which may be why some of mine were larger than the others, come to think of it. But anyway, then you're going to cut it in half this way. You've got two cylinders that look like this. The problem I found with that, and it may be because I didn't measure and maybe I should have, was that some of them, some of them made a larger donut because I don't know if the bags are, um, let me see what these two do. I don't know if the bags are wider at the top than they are at the bottom. We'll see if these two come out the same. But just gonna, you're just going to take it and scrunch it up. And you can do it as many times as you want to. 
This is where I would do a bunch of them and lay them aside. He's trying to use charades to sh tell me it's raining. Although I see the sun, it can't be raining much. Okay, so then you take it and squish it up. So do you see how do you see how big? It's not as thick around the edges, but it, it's a step less. But do you see how big that circle is? This was one whole bag, but look at the difference. And let's see this one. This was the whole bag. This was when I cut the bag in half right down the middle. Not the ones I glued. You skip that step altogether if you wanted to do it this way. But I didn't like how big the donut was. I mean, see how big your donut is? Now let me show you the two that I've already already glued and made cylinders. So I'm going and I just decided I liked it better. You you can try both of them and see what you like. But I'm, I'm thinking you would like your wreath better if you're going to do a large wreath to use the whole bag and get your donut like this. It's thicker and it's just more paper. Okay. And then you're going to, as you open it, take it and scrunch it. You see how much of a smaller donut you've got? You're going to go find that hole. See how much smaller? This was the large bag, large hole. This is half of the bag gluing them together. You've got the small one. This was half a bag that you just cut the bag in half. There's a lot of difference between this and this. But you just play with it and see what you like. Um, I, I like doing it this way even though it's an extra step. I thought it made a tighter, a tighter wreath. Ow. That's what I did for this one. Takes about 16 bags. Your, uh, the bigger one, I think I used about 25, 20 to 25 bags. Okay, so you just, you know, sometime you're watching TV, just sit down. And because uh, your hands will get tired if you try to do it all at one whack. So just get you something and start throwing the um, little donuts in it. So I'll do another one and show you. Then we're going to talk about how you can decorate it. All right, cut off the end right there on that seam. Save this. Then open up your bag. You want two pieces. Now if you want to cut it along this and then cut it again, do that. I just found it easier to cut the sides. Um, it just, I found it easier. It doesn't have to be a perfect cut. Because you've already got that line for you. But you want, you've got your bag into two pieces. Take it. This was the bottom. There's your little curve in the top. Now that's only on one side. The other side doesn't have the little cutout on your bags. So just make sure you turn it not the long way, but the shorter way. It makes um, a wider. Run some glue across there. Just put it down there and glue it. Okay, there you've got a smaller cylinder. We're going to do this one the same way. Y'all tell me if you're understanding the way you would cut and do the bags. If you want a large wreath, use the whole bag. Just cut off the bottom. Okay, and like I said, I would just I used did like five at a time, and then I would scrunch them up, and then go back and 
can kind of open them up and make my donuts. And like I said, you will need to do about, you know, 16 to 18 bags, which would be 32, 35 pieces or something like that, to fill up the small ring. But that's where your, your kids could help do this. You know, you could just glue them and have, you know, a child sitting there scrunching them up and then make a donut out of it. And you're continuing to scrunch it. Okay, once you get a pile of them done or do all of them or however, then you're going to take it and put them on your rings. So you've cut the rings here and you can bend it a little bit or whatever. Um, it's just me, so I'm not going to worry about um, it poking me or I'm just going to kind of fold it in. And then you just start putting your rings on there. Simple as that. Until you fill up this whole, until you fill up the whole thing. Does that make sense? Because they're going to squish together like this. Once you get about 30 of them on there. Now what I did, because you know they'll just fall right off this end. I took a big clip like this and I just put the clip across here. Well, I must have put it maybe going the other way or I clipped it on the wire so that the they wouldn't fall off and that way I could just keep pushing um, so maybe I did is this the clip I used I think it is there now it's not moving so I just did this and I just kept kept putting the donuts on there until the ring was so full that you almost couldn't get another one on there and then this is where you almost need two people. If you can push these down when they get over here and it gets so full, if you can take them and see and just push them down like this and glue the three rings together. But let me see if I can see where we did it. And I'll okay, it's got to be right here, close somewhere, right here. Ed helped me, and what we did is I held the paper and just pushed it down here and on this side. Push these down. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe Ed can zoom in a little bit. You'll see I've got it upside down because I see the top of the hook. But he took the top hook and the bottom hook and twisted them over that bar to where they would hook on there. Then he tightened it from the bottom and then I put a zip tie from, you know, the on inside of this one and the inside of this one. And then I put hot glue over it. I mean, that's not going to come apart. If you just want to use hot glue, that's up to you. Yeah, and that, that wire together like that. Yeah, I don't think there's any way. It'll break. It's a Dollar Tree thing. It'll break somewhere else before it breaks right there. So, um, Okay, but anyway, that's what you've got. Your donuts are more in line with each other, kind of the same shape. You you squish it, you know, as much as you want it. Put as many as you want on it. Make it as full as you want it. Now, this is where I think both people I watched actually painted, not really painted their brushes, but they would just get some paint, put it in a plate, take a real stiff brush and get off most of the paint, and then just dry brush it. You know, don't cover the whole thing. Uh, but if you wanted to kind of make this like a pumpkin and do orange, you could. Uh, they did white and black. But uh, for what I wanted to do, I wanted it this natural look. So you're, you're like, well, what do you do with a wreath like that? Well, I'm thinking somebody hanging it in, in their kitchen, uh, on their cupboards, but you also have the option if you want to make it very decorative. Here is a sign. It's busted on the back. Of course, it's Dollar Tree. Bust did it both in. No, this was Target. Okay, so here's one I picked up 
at the Target dollar spot. I paid five dollars for it, and the wood's busted on the back. But I liked it. It's cute as it is, but I liked it because I thought it was almost the exact size of your scrapbook paper. But you could take a frame like this, cut your scrapbook paper to where it fit just right inside, then take some ribbon and, you know, do the thing to where you put your wreath in and run ribbon from here to here. And then you've got just something you could set up on your fireplace mantle or something like that. You can use them to decorate with a larger piece of wood or anything like that. But I just, because of the thought that what I wanted to do, I wanted to leave it kind of plain. And my first thought was I wanted to do dried orange slices and scent them because I thought, and use cinnamon and pine cones. I thought that would be really, really cute. So when you're going to do that, I guess decide where you want your top. I really think I want the place where we have um, glued it to be on my side where I'm going to put my pine cones and stuff. That gives it a, a firmer thing. It won't be too heavy. So I have a whole container of fall items and I don't have a clue exactly how I'm going to do it. So it's just a work in progress. I'm not going to paint it. But I knew it was dark and the wood slices, so I bought this at Hobby Lobby because I thought that would just be a good, something white. I wanted to keep it very natural. Then when I got to playing around, I mean, it only had two things that had this on it. And if you pull it off and pull it out, that was just, that's just way too big. I want to do two of them to kind of give me a base. It's like a tassel. This does? Mm -hmm. It's kind of a cornstalk feeling. That's what I'm saying. Um, are your big pliers in here? I don't think they are. So I'm going to cut this off short. Actually, Ed's going to cut it for me. And then this is too long, so I just took my scissors and cut this off. I just didn't want it. I don't want it that long. It would cover three-fourths of the wreath. So we're going to like make this our base and one. I'm not going to put a bow or anything on it, I don't believe. So I'll have one going this way and then I will turn this one going this way. Alright, let me give that to him and just cut it. Ooh, watch. That's it. Probably a little shorter. Yeah. Okay. And I have all those others if I want to use them as part of the base, too. I just knew I'd, I didn't want to just stick the oranges on here. So I'm going to kind of glue these two like that. And, of course, you know I always work to where it's going to be on the left side. So I'm going to start with that. And I'm just going to put plenty of glue and glue it right on the paper. And stick my finger in the glue, very first thing. And you know, you can kinda bend this a little bit. Once I get it on there, it, it will bend a little. And then I'm gonna put the second one going this direction. You could cut, use as many of these white things as you want to. Bend it a little bit. And of course, it's a small wreath, so you know you don't want tons and tons of stuff on it. But I wanted it very natural. A very natural look. That's probably all of that one I'm going to use. And here are my oranges. I actually ordered these orange slices off of Amazon. I think I got 25 or 50. And then I put them in a jar and I took some essential oil, spiced pumpkin I think it was, and put in there. 
and left it for several days and put it on my washing machine. Every time I walked by, I would just shake the jar so that these were coated really well. So, I mean, this is not a wreath if you're very um, allergic to scents, but it's a cinnamon orangey smell, which I thought would be perfect for a kitchen. But, um, and then I've got the cinnamon sticks. And then I've got this whole container of just little things. It actually has some old orange things in it. But little pine cones and little, what are those called? Almost looks like a pecan, but I've got little bitty pumpkins. Not sure we'll put any pumpkins on it because I really don't want it screaming, you know, October. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of, I found these pretty little things at Hobby Lobby. I picked up a pack, a thing of these, because I knew that would give it some, some white. Um, I got some flowers, but I don't, I don't know that, that I'm going to use the flowers. I just know I'm going to use the pumpkin slices for sure. Huh? You said pumpkin slices. Oh, yeah. Pumpkin on the brain. Orange slices. It's going to be my main thing. I don't know that I'll use the flowers, um, but I have some of this pretty grass. I ordered this from, I think it was Nick. It's, season, it's Nick's seasonal decor. So I might use some of that. I brought in some of this. Don't know that I'll use it. Most of it's stuff that you'll use and I don't even know what these are but I have them but this is the type of thing I don't know what I'm gonna do till I start I have some of these weird things and I, I really like those colors um, I think I'm probably use the white one I don't know that I'll use that one but I know I want pine cones and stuff so I'm just going to kind of dig through here and pull out a few pine cones and start building but you can use whatever you've got I, I think on the um, Sorry, I'm getting a message. I think on the um, the other one, I'm going to do it in sunflowers because it's bigger and I think it'll look cute, sunflowers. All right, I'm going to kind of get this started by putting a couple of orange slices here kind of at the base, the side, to give me something to build on. So I'm just making it up as I go and you just use your creativity put as much or as little as you want to you don't want so much on it that it's really weighing it down And you'll have to um, just kind of hold them in place a little bit. All right, I probably need to put a pine cone or two over here. Like I said, I'm not going to put a ton. A 
We'll just kind of get it going. You can turn some of your oranges, you know, sideways. They smell so good. What essential oil did you say you put on it? It was um, spiced orange. You could use just plain old cinnamon. You don't have to send them. You can just use the plain oranges. I don't know how I want to do the cinnamon sticks. I think there were a couple of them in here that are already cut. There's some that are kind of open. I don't know what they're called. This was actually potpourri that I've had, and I keep rescinting it and using it over and over for different things. So my my hands will really be smelly. Yeah, it's a good, it's a strong cinnamon. That little thing's cute. I don't know what it is. But if I put it there, I'll probably then I'll cover it up. Let me, I wonder if you can break a cinnamon stick fairly easy. Uh, yep. So I'm going to take a cinnamon stick and stick right in there. You're basically just building, same as you would if you had a uh, floral arrangement. You're just kind of building a little thing over here. And then we're going to add some more color out this way. Okay, what if I take something with a... Maybe, I, what do you think these are? Pomegranates. Okay. Ugh. And they don't come off as easy as flowers. But I don't I don't want the greenery. I'm just gonna snip off see if that one pops off. Nope. Snip off a couple of those. And I just got them from um, Hobby Lobby. Now you do when you're doing something. When you're doing something like this, you do use a good bit of glue. You get another glue stick. I use Gorilla glue sticks. That's just my favorite. You're just kind of filling in holes. All right, that one can go down a little bit. And then I'm going to put one maybe here on the side. Y'all are really quiet. And th this is not a craft for everybody. Because you think, ah, a paper bag? Are you kidding me? Yes. And I don't know how it's coming out on the camera, but it, it really is a cute wreath. Oops. I keep my glue gun on. Well, now that wasn't good. I keep my glue gun on low temp for things like this. Now, where? Oh, there it is. That pomegranate came off its little stem. Okay. Since I want my oranges to be the main thing, I'm going to put on a couple more down here. And I don't think you have to have tons and tons. Yeah, 
Mrs. Moore. On some things. On everything. <laughs> Okay, so let's go back and see what some of this other stuff will look like. Most, most everything is in twos, but not everything. like the looks of that one in there. And you don't want to put just one of something. Hold my, my orange slice a little better. Because it's kind of sitting on an edge. Let me put a little bit of glue on this pine cone right there to hold it. I think I'm going to put that one right up here at the top. And so far I only have one glue stick in there, so I'm going to put in another one. Glue stick. Cinnamon stick. Cinnamon stick. Kelly Marie says, hello, I'm, I'm late. Oh my, oh, this is awesome. Tell us it's just, paper bag. Uh, what? Yes. It, did she ask if it was paper bags? No. no oh. she, um, yeah, it's really different, but to hang in your kitchen with these scented oranges, oh, if you like the smell. Karen Homer says, how are y'all? Hi, Karen. If, if you like the scent of cinnamon, I'm not sure my cinnamon, yeah, they're scented too. So we're just basically just building it up. I had some little fuzzy things. Let's see what they look like. You just kind of pull out what you've got and work with it until until it's the way you like it. And of course, these you have to break apart because you don't want you don't want one of those big old things in there. Let's see if I can pull that, or if I'm gonna have to cut it. And this is where you just make it to be your own. Um, I'm getting those little glue things everywhere. Karen Hunter said, cute, I did crosses with the paper bag. Oh, yeah, I bet those were pretty. Just trying to decide if I want this that close to that other one. Or if I want to go in here at the side. 
I think I kind of want to go in there at the side. Because I've got one kind of at the bottom sticking out. That's the thing about these paper bags. I mean, you know, your glue will stick. We'll stick to those bags. And if you use several different products, you don't have to use that much of anything. I got glue on one of those leaves. So I'm just going to clip it off and see if I want to use any of this or not. I like these brown, kind of like these brown leaves. We'll just see. I don't know about the little, little white things, but we'll, we'll check them out. If I don't use them in this, I can use them in something else. I just don't want the whole wreath, you know, covered. Well, it smells good. It does smell good. That's why I was thinking it would be perfect for a kitchen cupboard or a pantry door. don't really think I like those. I think I like those. That kind of brings out the color of the um, palm granites a little bit. Kind of looks like you're making a flower arrangement. Well, you are kind of. You just have a curvage to it. You're just kind of building. Okay, I like that one under there. Karen sent you a photo of the cross. Oh, okay. Thank you. I'll look at it and since I get done here. Did you use the um, crossboard from the Dollar Tree or Unique in the Creek? Okay. She said she sent it on Messenger. Okay. But I hadn't seen it pop up. Well, like I said, I thought this would be really pretty with sunflowers too. So. That's what I'm going to do the other one with. It's the sunflowers. Dollar, dollar tree. tree. I may have to try that. I've got a whole box of those Dollar Tree crosses out there. Can you find them? Yeah, they're, they're in a box marked Dollar Tree Cross. <laughs> Can I find them? Of course. Now, can I get to them once I find them? That, that might be another. I could actually put the cinnamon stick flat there, but I don't know that I want to do that. Okay, I guess I better glue this one up and under here. I worried about putting too much on it because like I said, you don't 
you don't want it weighing. <laughs> Karen says that's a different story. I can find something usually, but I can't get to it. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's way over there. She's got a, what is it, 12 or 12 shed? I don't remember. And uh, it's piled all the way to the ceiling. Yep. Both sides. But at least it's not in the house. Part of it will be pretty soon when I go out there and get the rest of my fall stuff. <laughs> Okay, I need something right here. I'm not sure what. You always want to turn your wreaths or anything else um, at all the different angles to make sure you don't have any holes. And I usually just have it in my head about how far down I want to go on my wreath. Since this doesn't have a bow, um, you could, you know, do it hanging this way. Yeah, Marie said hers in her house. <laughs> Storage. <laughs> yeah, Julie had to, we had to buy a shed just so the kids could get it. <laughs> Come home for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> okay, I think I need a pine cone there. Yeah, Carrie, I heard you the other night when somebody made the statement about how organized your craft room was. And you were like, yeah, this is staged. It doesn't look like that in the rest of the room. <laughs> but hey, we're crafters. You know, you... Sally Longstale said hi from England. Oh, hi, Sally. Thank you for being here. You can't craft with stuff if you don't have it to start with, right? I'm just kind of filling in some um, spots with smaller things like the cinnamon sticks. I got to find something to go right over here. I'm just not too sure what. Yeah, she said it is staged. The rest looks like a tornado went through. But I bet you know where everything's at. Bet you can get to it eventually. <laughs> All right, I'm going to see if that piece of cinnamon stick will just kind of stick here on the side. I'll have to hold it just a second under that orange, so. He said that we crafters are messy. Yeah, but that, that's the fun of it, right? The glue strings are awful. The smell begin to get strong. Well, I got this thing open, too. I don't know that I'm going to put that. I didn't use any of these. Let me just see. Let me get one of these things out and see what what it is. I just thought they were such a pretty color. Alright. Muscle man. Oh, never mind. <laughs> it just came loose. These are kind of long. They almost feel like they almost feel like a velvet material. It's a little strange. But very pretty, very pretty color. But I'm about to run out of places to stick stuff. You see, that's too long. Once you start cutting like this, then they want to come unwrapped. Which might be okay and just use these, a couple of them, and not so many. 
Hang on. They are pretty color. They're just so long. You don't want them too long. I guess I could cut them off. It looks pretty like that. Let's see if I can get a couple up here, kind of. All right, let me. I like the color because they're so close to the orange slices in color. them under there not burn myself that orange slice whoop, it's on there okay once you have the stuff glued um, hand me those white things again you can you can um, move it around a little bit. I'm just taking a little bit more of this white and just tearing, cutting it off. And I'm making a mess, but like I said, you just kind of have to keep adding and keep adding until it's what you want. And you want it like down in there under that. So you can't see it, but you don't want to stick your fingers in there either. How many of you have ever used your scissors to do something like that? And then when you pull your scissors out, the thing comes out too. I've done that. I could do a uh, wood skewer. Of course, these can always be cut on this end, too, because they're not really um, that long. Okay, what do you think? Think we're getting there? <laughs> I mean, because it's got a good bit of stuff. Does that go on the side? Is that right? It's, yeah, it's on the side. I think I need something right here. Um, I don't know if I could put I could put another cinnamon stick right there. Um, I can just stick a pine cone right there. But it needs something right there. I think that pine cone looks pretty good, laid on its side like that. Kind of helps fill that hole. Right there. Let me hold it just a second. And if you wanted more oranges, oranges, or you wanted more smell, you know, you could put more orange on there. I didn't end up using but five oranges slices. Okay. 
I think that's probably, unless I decide something needs to go under there and it might would be a pomegranate. Because it's small. Pumpkins would be perfect if I wanted to put pumpkins in it because I have some pretty, pretty small little pumpkins. But I think I'm about done. Now, let me get all this stuff out of the way. A couple of things I didn't really like and didn't use, but that's okay. Fall's just starting. I will use them. And I'll put the lid back on that pretty quick, probably. I want to kind of show you on the um, board. Just, just make sure it isn't an apple. <laughs> I haven't had those apple pumpkins back out again. <laughs> but now this, no joke, this would have been pretty with a couple of little apples on it though. I just didn't want pumpkin. All right. So what I was talking about, and you might would want to go larger than this, um, is putting you know, putting some sort of paper, and I just, I use black and white in my living room to decorate with, um, and just, you could run black and white ribbon, you could, you could, eat, you could do it any way you want to, you could probably do it this way, or you could turn it to where it's on the side, just inside this frame, glue it, or hang it, that would be really cute, but I'm thinking it would be really cute just just hung on a um, either ribbon probably right here and hang it on a um, cabinet. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> he's, got, <laughs> he's got a piece of this stuck behind his ear like a flower, y'all. He really needs to be on this side of the camera. <laughs> then y'all could really laugh. Okay. I think I'm done with it. I think I've put plenty on there. Like I said, Ed says I I tend to overdo, but guess what I'm going to do with it, Ed? Hang it up and watch it for a week. Maybe not a week. I'm going to make a sunflower one. So I'm going to take this other one. <laughs> Karen only said show us Ed. It's some things are just lost in the translation. <laughs> <laughs> if he ever turns the camera to show y'all his face, it, it will be a mistake. And he did, was it my first video or second video? He flipped it and then he didn't know how to flip it back. And my kids still go back. They've saved that video. They still go back and look at it because he's got this thing when he gets nervous about, you know, his hands go up to his hair. So the minute you see his face, he's like, you know, they love it. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it just like that, but he's right. I am going to hang it up and go up by and look at it, but I think it turned out really cute. Smells amazing with the cinnamon and the pumpkin, and um, I think it's really cute out of the paper. I'm going to take this one. See, it's, it's thicker and bigger, and I'm going to kind of do the same thing, only I'm going to decorate it with sunflowers because I thought this was a little bigger. Uh, and you can kind of manipulate it to be the size you want to, but this was the one, remember, that I just took the bag. If you weren't here at the first, I just took the bag and cut the end off. Save them. We're going to make a pumpkin out of them. And I just... Um, cut it this way rather than have to cut cut and glue but then after I made it I thought I just that's bigger than I wanted and I don't like the fact that some of them are bigger than others but they can be manipulated really easy and I think by the time I put sunflowers all around it it will be fine but that's another day I'll work on that maybe sometime this week in um, but anyway, this is what we did tonight, and I'll take a picture of it and put it on to show those that, that didn't hang around. So I will see y'all Thursday night at 6 o'clock. 
No, this is Thursday night, wasn't it? I'll see you Monday at 6 o'clock. And I'm not positive what we're going to be doing, but I'll send a notice out. So thank you all for being here, and I will see you Monday. Bye-bye.